classes. So, ladies and gentlemen, of course, when we want to find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes, you guys need to remember where do these horizontal and vertical asymptotes, what do they tell us? What do we know at each point? All right? When we have, remember, now we're talking about functions, so this is our f of x, and that's our x. That looks like a y. So, when we're dealing with this, and I have, and I say, what is my, and I'm just losing it, aren't I? Okay. So, when I have my x-intercept, that means when the graph crosses the x-axis, right? What is my value of my f of x, my output at this? Let's say here's the intercept. What is the value of my f of x at that point? Huh? Zero. f of x equals zero at this point, right? Because you're not going up or down at all. So when I say x-intercept, when I want to find the x-intercept of a function, either my f of x equals 0, or sometimes we might say y equals 0 if we're just dealing with linear lines and not functions. But x-intercept, your output, at x-intercept, your output is equal to 0. So what do you put in for 0? You put 0 in for f of x. 0 equals 5 plus 2x divided by 1 plus x. I thought you just had it equal to the bottom. That was for finding the vertical asymptotes, which we did last video. Now what we're doing is we're trying, we're trying to find the x and y intercepts. OK? So this is, yeah, just, so for the vertical, for the asymptote, right, that's different than an intercept. The asymptote is where your graph is going to approach vertically. But now we're just finding the intercepts, where it crosses, the x-intercepts, okay? So now I've got to solve for 0. Well, how do, you, how do you solve a rational function like this? Well, the first thing is always to get whatever's on your bottom off your bottom, right? So how do we get 1 plus x off the bottom? We can multiply it by both, on both sides. So therefore, I'm left with 0 equals 5 plus 2x. All right? Subtract 5, 2x, divide by 2. So therefore, x equals negative 5 halves, which is what? About negative 2.5? OK, so we could say negative 5 halves comma 0. That's your x-intercept. OK, that's where the graph, I don't know what the graph looks like. You can do it in your graphing calculator. But the graph I know crosses at negative 5 halves, because I did my work there. Okay. Now, so if f of x equals 0 is for your x-intercept, what do you think equals 0 for your y-intercept? Yes. The x, right? So we just write out y-intercept is when x equals 0. So what do we do? Just put in 0 for x. So you do f of x equals. 5 plus 2 times 0 divided by 1 plus 0. So f of x equals 5. So that means my y-intercept, or my f of x-intercept, is going to equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my graph crosses there, and it crosses there. Now, it's not a line. You don't connect it. That's what we do in Algebra 2. That's what I'm working with them. They're finding the x, y-intercepts and connecting it, right? But we have some graph that we need to um, look at and see what it's going to look like. So we go back to our intercepts, which we did last video. I'm not going to make you guys graph it, all right? But I just want to show you guys how to find your solution points. So x equals negative 1. That's your horizontal asymptote, correct? Horizontal asymptote is negative 1. So that means your graph approaches this line, OK? It approaches that line. Um, so I don't know how it's going to open like this, approaches that way. It, remember, it has to approach infinity or negative infinity for it to be an asymptote. So the next thing it says is choose some solution points. And I need you guys to show me that there's solution points. So what I'd like you guys to do is on each side of the asymptote point, when I ask you to find your solution points, for each side of the asymptote point, I'd like you to choose two points. Now, which two points do you choose? This always gets students confused. It's arbitrary. Pick whatever points you want to. Zero would. 0 you already picked, which was your y-intercept. I'd like you to show me two other points. All right? So but let's make it easy on ourselves. So what I'll do is I'll do an xy table. And I'll pick, why don't we pick 1 and 2? Right? And then to the left of this, why don't we do negative 1 and negative 3? All right? So pick two points to the left and two points to the right that do not include your y-intercept. I'm sorry? Uh, yeah, we can't do that. I'm sorry, I meant negative 2. Wait, so on our homework, we'll have to pick two solution points? You're going to want to pick, yes. On your homework, we talked about solution points. So I want you guys to go back and do the solution points. Okay? So, um, 
you look at your vertical asymptote and you just pick the points to the left and to the right of your asymptote. Okay, so I just want you to show me that there's two other. Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. So the graph calculator is going to help you know what the graph is going to look like, but I still want you to do it. So let's just do these. This is pretty easy mathematically for us to go through. So let's put in one. Two times one is one, two. Two plus um, or two plus five is seven. So it's going to be seven halves, right? Okay, I'll go and give it to her. Thank you. Um, so for the next one, let's do two. Two times two is four. Four plus five is nine. So that's going to be nine thirds. Let's do negative two. Two times negative two is negative four. Five plus negative four is one. And that's going to be one over negative one, which is negative one. Let's do negative three. Two times negative three is negative six. Negative six plus five is negative one. So it's negative one over negative two which is going to be um, negative 1 over negative 2, which would be a positive 3 halves. So let's take a look at this. Um, if I go over to 1, that's going to be um, 2 or 3 and a half, right? As you write this kind of decimal. Yes? 9 thirds is actually obviously 3, right? So 7 halves is going to, so I go over 1, I'm going to go to 3.5. 1, 2, 3.5. Um, and then I go to 9 thirds, which is, or at 1, 2, positive 2, I'm going up to 3. All right? Then we have negative 2, which goes to negative 1. And then at negative 3, 1, 2, 3, I'm up at 1 half. Okay? Now, I'm not asking you guys to graph the line. However, if you use your graphing utility and you use your y-intercept or your horizontal asymptote, I'm sorry, which looks like this, you can actually shape the graph to look something like this. Is it? OK. But I'm not going to ask you guys to graph it. All right. Um, all, I want, all I'm concerned about right now is that you can find the x and y intercepts and show me you can do that, and that you can pick some solution points to plug in. So which points do you pick again? Just pick points to left and to right of your asymptote. Yes? Just make the table and figure out the solution points. Yes. 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 Um, it's uh, it depends on two points. Is um, well, when you're plugged table, no, you can just show me that your points. Okay. And you're good. That's fine. I just took my vertical asymptote and I picked two points to the left and two points to the right. I just picked those points. I, you can make you can pick whatever you want. Yep, two, two points to the right. Yep. Yeah. Yes. And I'm not, <coughs> yep. No, you do not have to. 